Hey there, what's up dude? Not much, just hanging out here at the bowling alley. Why are we here at the bowling alley again? I'm not really sure, but who cares? The important thing is that I'm the Big Lebowski. This is true. So how's life been? Life's been treating me pretty well. I don't have anything to complain about. Why did you ask me to come over though? Well, this is kind of embarrassing, but I have to retake a statistics course since I never passed a single test, quiz, project, or homework assignment. Wait, really? Thoughts? Thoughts actually kind of sad, to be honest. How can I help? Well, you see, I keep on getting confused when Professor Setzer tries to teach me about type 1 and type 2 errors. Can you help explain the differences between them? Of course, man. Anything for a friend. Getting confused about type 1 and type 2 error is much more common than you might think. Back when I was in statistics, it took me a long time to finally understand what type 1 and type 2 error actually meant. That makes me feel a lot better. So to start off with, what is a type 1 error? Why do you want to know? Too many questions, man. Just tell me. There isn't much time left. All right, all right. A type 1 error is incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. So a type 1 error would be saying that I failed to reject the... No, you fool. That is wrong. You just lost points. Okay, so explain to me what it is then. I just explained. Type 1 error is incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when in reality the null hypothesis is true. Can you give me an example? I'm not quite sure I understand yet. Okay, so let's say the null hypothesis for some test is mean. Weight equals 50 pounds, and the p-value of the test statistic you calculated was 0 .0000001. You would reject the null hypothesis. A type 1 error would be if in reality, the population mean was actually 50 pounds. Okay, so what would be the consequences of making a type 1 error? Well, in essence, a type 1 error is a false positive, since the test statistic calculated would force the researcher to incorrectly reject the null hypothesis. Here, I found this great explanation of type 1 error. I can't wait. Here you go, a type 1 error alpha is when a statistic calls for the rejection of a null hypothesis which is factually true. This is unavoidable, statistically speaking, even. Purely random events will occasionally produce non-random seeming results. A type 1 error is called a false positive because it forces the researcher to make a positive statement that something odd is happening, when in fact, nothing is happening except an excess of chance. In the same way that your family doctor means that something odd is going on with your body when she tells you that a test came back positive. Wow, thanks. That actually makes a lot of sense. But I still have no idea what type 2 error is, or what it means, or anything about it, really. Here, let me try to explain it, but first you have to say Benedict Cumberbatch. Why on earth do I have to do that? Because it will sound funny when you say it. All right. Benedict Cumberbatch, are you happy? Uh-huh, ha, huh, ha, huh, ha. Huh, huh. That just made my day. Thank you. Okay, a type 2 error. Beta is when a statistic does not give enough evidence to reject a null hypothesis even when the null hypothesis should factually be rejected. Increasing the power of the test by increasing sample size or making new assumptions can help to minimize the likelihood of this error. A type 2 error is a false negative for the same reasons as above. The researcher is forced to say that nothing interesting is happening. Word to that. I think I understand type 2 error now. Thank you for all of your help, dude. Don't mention it. You better hurry. I can hear police sirens. Oh shoot, I've gotta run now. If anyone asks, this meet never happen. My lips are sealed.